is the legendary warrior versus the superstar middleweight champion. Big left hand by Martinez, and down goes Barker on a right hook. He is taking big thunder, and a left hook upstairs from Cotto. He's getting hammered. Cotto is beating the hell out of him. Will he get up? No, he's been knocked out. Cotto versus Martinez. See it live. All right, Larry and I will be there next Saturday night, this night a week, in Madison Square Garden in New York City for the middleweight championship of the world. Miguel Cotto, Sergio Martinez. Quick comment on that fight. Uh, Martinez coming off a couple of injuries, long in the tooth. Well, that's the question mark. Uh, it would not seem to be any questions if they were both uh, healthy and in their primes because Martinez is the bigger guy but he's also the older guy and uh, coming off some uh, pretty serious injuries and uh, inactivity I do know this the garden is going to be jam-packed with a lot of passionate fans and all that's one week from tonight on top rank boxing Larry and I will be doing the international telecast. And for you people that like to see the undercard, I'll be bringing you the streaming of the undercard. And the next fight of the evening now is the WBA World Featherweight Championship fight. And it features these two men. Reigning champ undefeated from Jamaica. Nicholas Walters, the undefeated WBA 126-pound champ. So how do we wind up with two WBA champs? you know uh, the details of uh, that, Colonel? <laughs> yeah, I do, because when they have a super champion, they have an interim champion, and that's the situation. You know, it is what it is. That's <laughs> what the WBA does. The WBC, their interim championship is, uh, as we look at Walters here in action, uh, WBC does a little bit different. If a guy's injured or can't fight or fights uh, uh, somebody else, then they have elected to have an interim championship fight while well, that's going on. We know the business of boxing. It's about sanctioning fees. And it's about having as many champions as you can count. And here's Vic Dachinian. The fighter that uh, he's been his entire career is just a warrior. He comes, it comes, it comes. You know, and, and he was a, a, a really entertaining, dynamic fighter in the lower weight divisions when he was younger. Uh, flyweight, bantamweight, knockout power, a, a bundle of positive energy. Can he be the younger, bigger guy for the featherweight title? So our WBA World Featherweight Championship fight coming up. Nicholas Walters against Vic Dachinian. The Koh Tai Arena here in Macau, China. Now there he is, Vic Dachinian. He trained in Glendale, California for this fight. He's a southpaw. He's been a professional since way back at uh, on 2000. He fought in the 2000 Olympics, and then he turned pro after that. He liked Sydney, Australia so much, he found a girlfriend down there at the Olympics fighting for uh, a media that he stayed there and turned pro down there and had a tremendous career. You mentioned his world champion, 112 pounds. He beat the ring uh, Pacheco for the IBF flyweight championship. He had seven successful defenses of that world title. He lost his title to Donito Donaire, who you'll see in action tonight. And he won world titles at 115 pounds. And had big wins over Dmitry Kirilov, Christian Meharis. And Jorge Arce, who he knocked out. Vic Dachinian. He's 38 years of age, and he just loves to fight. Met this guy for the first time yesterday. Very personal guy, Nicholas Walters. 
He had an extensive amateur career, a slew of international titles, 320 amateur fights. Turned pro in August of 08, and he's won them all ever since. He trains and works in Panama. He's aggressive. He's got a decent jab. He talks about his power. He broke his right hand. He hit a guy so hard about three years ago. Had that operated on. He got plenty of power left in it. And he's also smart. Uh, his father was a fighter and trained him. Father has a gym. Uh, comes from a place where other fighters have originated and gone abroad to make their marks. As you take a look at the tail of the tape, what stands out, an inch in height, in the age. is 10 years difference. Also, the reach. Eight and a half inches reach advantage for Nicholas Walters. The way Dachinian fights, unless Walters has got a great jab, which, by the way, he did show in his uh, battle against the great champion, Chris John. He, he showed that he has a really good jab. If he can use that, then he can hold off Dachinian and just try to break him down. Okay, Robin Leach is standing by. Let's get this second championship fight underway. Here's Robin. Welcome to the wonderful Venetian Macau, where champagne wishes do come true. Top rank in association with Foreman Boys Promotions are proud to present this co-main event scheduled for 12 rounds in the featherweight division for the WBA World Championship. Sponsored by Takadi, Con Character, and by PlayStation. PlayStation 4, greatness awaits. Sanctioned by the World Boxing Association. Supervisor at ringside is Aurelio Finego, along with the Professional Boxing Commission of China's Executive Director, Leon Panoncello. At ringside, the three judges scoring this contest are Francisco Martinez, Takashi Shimakua, and Louis Pabon. Inside the ring, the man in charge of the action is referee Raul Caiz. Introducing first in the blue corner, wearing red and black trunks, weighing in at 125.8 pounds, with a professional record of 39 wins, six defeats, one draw, and 28 of those wins coming by knockout. The former two division world champion from Glendale, California, Please welcome Vic Raging Bull Dachin Dachinjanjan. And now, fighting out of the red corner, wearing green, black, and yellow trunks, weighing in at 125 and a half pounds, with a professional record of 23 wins against no defeats, he is the reigning and defending WBA featherweight champion of the world all the way from Montego Bay, Jamaica man please welcome Nicholas Walters this is 12 rounds for the WBA featherweight championship of the world well I'm really excited to see Nicholas Walters I know about Vic Dacini and I know Vic will bring everything he has to Walters and it'll be interesting to see if this 28 year old guy uh, who's 10 years younger than Vic in his prime as uh, Raul Caiz Jr. the uh, referee gives the final instructions right, 10 point must scoring system no standing 8 count no 3 no knockdown roll the fighter men get fight. up following a low Legal blow punches. or he may be counted out final like instructions by Raul Caiz Jr. Well, so well, we're set to go yeah. well the first fight turned out to be less champagne and caviar than uh Vodka and chocolate. Let's see what we get here. Well, if Walters does anything other than just jab Dachini in the early going, he claims he's going to pressure him and put a Ready. lot of pressure on him. If he can Ready. do that immediately, this will be Box. real interesting in a hurry. If he's smart, he'll jab and stay away from this guy because Vic will come at him with everything he's got. But Vic has got to get inside that eight inch 
it's actually eight and a half inches in reach. So Vic, best thing he can do is make himself smaller and try and get inside there. Instead of the jab, the Jamaican fighter who trains in Panama, he goes with that big looping right hand to get things started here in round one. Round one is usually a finning out round, but this guy from Jamaica has a lot of early round and first round knockouts on his uh, career record. Vic isn't the type of guy that fears anybody, especially a champion that he doesn't know too well. And other than the fact that he defeated two terrific champions from Indonesia, not many people know anything about Walters. Though he's from Jamaica, he's fought most of his fights in Panama. Panama, Larry, another one of those places like in your time as a kid, the Philadelphia Chips, or uh, in present day, the kids that come up to Tijuana to fight. Well, of and course, I remember uh, Mike McCallum, the uh, middleweight who uh, trained in the U.S. under Emmanuel Stewart. Um, he was a Jamaican. Uh, the heritage of Lennox Lewis was Jamaican. Trevor Burbick uh, was Jamaican. And there was a very famous fight in Jamaica once, uh, George Foreman knocking out Joe Frazier. But there isn't much of a fight scene there or infrastructure. So we'll see if a fighter can just materialize out of that place because uh, of his, his heritage, his dad being a fighter. Well, he's doing the right thing by, you know, going down to Panama where he can get plenty of work down there. And the gyms down there in Panama, it's tough. And that's where he's working and living. Fell short with that uppercut. He tried to test that. He's landing more shots than, than Vic, but not many more. It's not as explosive as we thought. In fact, I'm, you know, surprised to see Nicholas Walters quite as patient as he is here in this uh, title defense for himself. This, by the way, is his first title defense of the, the WBA title. Seconds. Guys loaded up shots that time. Chanian drove him back with a left hand. Not an especially big round, but I think Walters landed more than Vic did. That's all I can separate the two guys by in that round. Darchanian uh, says his new heroes are uh, Bernard Hopkins and uh, Juan Manuel Marquez because of uh, they both hit the 40 mark and beyond, and he is 38. How he does in this fight probably will determine uh, whether he can still fight on this level in the future. Well, so far, so good. Short, crisp right hand by Vic as he caught Walters coming in. Vic, for most of his career, had uh, Angelo Hyder and Jeff Fennick working with him in uh, Eastern Australia which is, of course, where Sydney is. And now he has the Armenian group from Glendale. They were speaking Armenian in the corner, which I found unusual, because I can recall Fennec and Angelo, you know, talking so much to him in the corners before in that Australian accent. So it's strange to hear the Armenian language in there. And, of course, they're speaking Spanish in the other corner. Nick really sort of awkward 
trying to engage this guy a little bit. A lot of fainting, strange movements. All business from the Jamaican. Uh, he's trying to taunt him uh, into opening up. D'Artinian. Yeah, Victor, quite frankly, would told us if he wasn't a professional fighter, he just wouldn't fight him in the street. He just, he just loves the fight. Nicky, did you get that idea when you interviewed him this week that he's just a, a, a tough kid? If he makes Walker's fight, he uh, may have to be careful of what he wishes for. Oh, yeah. he hit with an uppercut and dropped him. No sooner did you say it than he get hit with the uppercut. He's smiling with it. It didn't hurt him, but he got dropped. Well, he didn't wish for that one. No, he didn't. So the uppercut caught him right away. I wouldn't say he was in the process of fooling around there, but certainly Walters all business. And now he's felt the heavy handedness of Walters, even though that wasn't a real heavy knockdown. Vic, kind of like a street fighter would be, or a hockey fighter. He gets knocked down. And go, get this guy. It's an insult. Yeah. But that's going to cost them a couple of points. Stop! No points. Break. Closing Stop seconds of the second Stop. round. This is for the The way Walter swings and cocks that right hand, uh, I'm not sure he's going to hit too many really good fighters with it. Well, we'll see how he progresses and how it does progress. He's 28 years old, 23 and 0. A good short uppercut inside. Right on the chin. Lifted up the left leg of Vic. Boom, look at that. Slides forward. And down he goes. He smiled when he first got hit. Now he's got a look on his face like, you know, he's possessed. Looks like a demon right now. He's got to hustle to get some points back because with a knockdown, he's behind by three points after two rounds, and that's a bad sign. He's going to win three, four, and five just to get even. Well, and let's recall that in his last fight against an air, fight he was winning um, until an air got him with a left hook in the eighth round that led to the end. He's all business. He did a little taunting. He didn't seem to be doing that in the opening part of the third round. Yeah, how did that work out? To me, it never works out. I hate to see fighters do that, but I understand Vic, and I understand why he did it. But it didn't work out. <laughs> nice straight left. Virginia. At some stage, this could turn into a, well, I'd expect it from the get-go, but they're both professional fighters. Sometimes the anticipation of a fight for me, I just expect that it's about winging kind of like a hockey fight. But that is the way it works at the professional level very often, that they just go toe-to-toe -to -toe from the opening get-go. And trying to figure out a way to get inside where, where the uh, reach doesn't matter and having a hard time getting there without accepting punches like that one. Vic is 5'6", and Walters is listed at 5'7", but the reach advantage for Walters is extraordinary. He's got a 73-inch reach. Vic is 64 half. That's eight and a half inches. I think uh, Chinian is closer to 5'4". I wonder who measured him. All I can do is take what they give us, because I'm not going around with a date measure. Stop, no punch, I'm here. But you may be right, Larry, too, that uh, 
you know, with that much difference in, in, in reach, there might be more difference in height than what we realize. But he's been going around at uh, five, six for a lot of years. Some reason you just joined us. Evgeny Gradovich won a unanimous decision over Alexander Miskirchen to retain the IBF featherweight championship. So one champion has retained his title. The second champion is ahead in this fight. Ten seconds. Stop at the bell. Listen for that bell. Up good. Punches and he's bound to get nailed he, seriously. He got, almost got nailed a la Manny Pacquiao against uh, Juan Manuel Marquez in the very closing second there. But I can't give that chinny in that round as much as I'd like to. I think Walter's uh, landed more heavy blows. Thirty twenty six after three. Is that friend Caitlin in the USA? It is our friend Victor Ginian. Craig Christian and the boys are from the Green Machine, Angelo Heider, Danny Green. Daniel Gale, Box. everybody from Australia watching tonight. Jeff Fennick with great interest in this kid. <laughs> this is round four. The Colonel Bob Sheridan here with Larry Merchant. Nikki Reyes is with us. <laughs> They've opened up a little bit here in the fourth round. Virginia trying to figure a way on the inside to catch up with this guy. That's Vic in the red trunks. With the colors of the Jamaican flag, of course, is Nick Walters, who is from Montego Bay in Jamaica, though he trains and works and lives now in Panama. He's a very proud Jamaican. With the South Palm, the right-handed fighter, occasionally you just saw that their front feet get tied up. Walters are Stop. trying to put D'Artinian on the defensive, which is not the place that the Chinian likes to be. Now this whole thing has been right in the center of the ring. They've uh, only grazed the ropes uh, into the fourth round, I think, one time. No punch, that's a freak. <laughs> Third man in the ring, one of the real good referees in boxing, Raul Taiz Jr. from Stop, no punch, State of no California. Box. And now that you mention it, Colonel, I don't recall either fighter in the first fight ever been on the ropes. <laughs> been nothing but action. These guys have come to fight tonight, all of them. Vic can't figure this guy out. When I say that, he lands a, a left hand of sorts. He's having trouble because uh, Walters has a tendency to really stretch out the his front foot. And Vic is getting stepped on and he's tripping over it a lot. And it's causing him balance problems throughout the course of the fight. Of course, the idea is to work your front foot to the outside of your opponent, but it's very tough when you're shorter. And this guy separates his legs so much, like Walters does. You think he has educated feet? Oh, I do, yeah. I don't think this is by any mistake. I think they get tied up, but they're both trying to work for positioning. And Walters, because of the length of his legs and the way he spreads them out, is very tough on that chinny, and he keeps tripping over them. He's a smaller, older opponent in front of him and Stop. thinks he ought to get him out of there. I'm tired of looking at him already. Well, the bell ends the fourth round, and he's another one on the bank for Walden.
remember when Nachinian fought his last fight against uh, Nanito Donair in uh, the losing effort, that he won most of the early rounds. But we found out yesterday when we talked to Nanito that he never said anything about it, but he told us he had the flow in that fight. Now, I know the kid pretty well, and so do you. I don't think he's making things up. Well, what happened when he knocked Garchinian out? What happened to the flu bug then? <laughs> it went away. A big complaint that, uh, you know, the referee interfered at the end, and he should have let it go a little bit longer, too. But, hey, that's yesterday's news. Tonight, Vic Garchinian is behind in this fight. He was knocked down in the second round, though it was only a flash knocked down by a, a decent uppercut. Walters is kind of controlling things, both with his hands and his feet. A little bit of desperation I see in the face of Vic Dachinian right now. Inspired, as Larry mentioned, by Bernard Hopkins, he wants to continue to fight. I don't know whether it's the reach and height advantage that Walters has, but Vic doesn't seem to be able to execute as he did at the lower weight levels at 126. I don't think he has the, the style, the pure boxing uh, ability and acumen to extend his career very much farther than this. With Hopkins and Marquez. Outstanding boxer. Hands are free. Right on the belt line, right on the belt line. In the fifth round, it's getting tougher and tougher for Vic Dachinian. As the Jamaican fighter just putt shots him, using the jab, getting the right hand through. Seemingly has quicker hands. Vic, Vic just can't catch him flush. When I say that, he gets a straight left hand through. Invariably, that'll happen. And he gets back. Oh, and he's he's hurt. Hurt. He is hurt. This is the end right here. He's ready to go. And he goes down. That'll have to take the eighth Three, count here. Four, he was wobbled and wobbled five, hard. You take the seven and eight count. And you know how you know he was wobbled hard? He didn't stay down. He jumped right up. Well, this guy Walter's now going to try to finish him off right here. Because Vic is very flat-footed. He's reeling around the ring. Walter senses that he can end this thing right now. And how many punches will Caiz let him take? Vic is out on his feet. Yeah. He's just on instinct right now. And he gets nailed with a left hand. This fight's over. Vic Dachinian is knocked out. They don't bother to count it. But Walter said he has power. And in the end, he showed he did. Well, Vic had to come to Walters. He came winging wide punches. Walter saw what was happening and stepped in. And as I said earlier, he was tired of looking at him in the fourth round and got rid of him here in the fifth. Well, we waited for the explosive power, and in the end, that's exactly what Nicholas Walters delivered. The WBA world featherweight champion Nicholas Walters goes to 24 and 0 and he beat a man that used to be a terrific fighter at the lighter weights especially 112 and he won world titles at 115 as well did Vic well and you wonder now about the main event the Nair's going up up in weight Coming up from flyweight divisions to bantamweight, now at featherweight, fighting a natural featherweight. Well, we'll see what it's all about, but Vic was starched, especially with that final left hand. The character called Nicholas Walters. Lupe has the official particulars, so let's go up to him. Here is Lupe Contreras. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout concludes with an official time of 2 minutes, 22 seconds of round number 5. Your winner, by way of knockout and still...
the WBA featherweight champion of the world, the X-Man, Nicholas Walter. Larry, take a look at that. This is the way it unfolded. That was the knockdown back in the second round. A couple of shots of it. That surprised him. He was off balance for that one. He wasn't hurt. But he was hurt with this. This is the end of it now. Yeah. Hurt bad. Body shot on top of it. He goes down. That's the first time he was down. And Larry, you made the comment at the time. You know he's hurt because he popped right back up. Right. Um, Arch and where I got that wisdom from was uh, Archie Moore who knocked Marciano down and Marciano jumped right up. And Moore always insisted that uh, he was really hurt badly to have done that. So that was uh, the origins of that comment. Well, that's digging into the uh, experience of calling fights for a lot of years. Nicholas Walters has done it. He retains his version of the WBA World Featherweight title. Well, in the in the famous arts of war, in the ancient scripture by the general Sun Tzu, he said, when you attack, attack like fire. And when Walters had him hurt, he didn't let him get away. Well, he didn't. He caught him with a vicious left hook in the end that put the reeling Dutchinian down, and you could see it coming. It wasn't meant to be for Vic Dutchinian tonight. So, Larry, where does Dutchinian go? Does he stay at it? He, he, you made well, the comment earlier watching him that it doesn't appear that he can 